My friends, the wait for Multiverse is over. Welcome to Digital Charcuterie. My name is Andrew Fantasia. Thank you so much for tuning in right now. Um, I'm buzzing because, as you can see, Multiverse, Marvel United Multiverse, has arrived. And I'm filming this out of order, so the reason you already see it opened is because I opened it two days ago. Uh, but that unboxing video begins right now. As usual, if you enjoy this, please feel free to give a thumbs up, give some love to the subscribe button if you haven't, and give some extra love to my fantasy novels, We Were Wizards, which you can find on Amazon right now. They're about wizards and swords and adventure and magical creatures and conspiracy and history and lies throughout the ages. That's a lot of fun. I wrote these. There's more to come, but check these out on Amazon if you like fantasy books or you know somebody who does. I'm going to unbox this, but I'm going to do it in a slightly different way. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time going through every component and every card. Um, if you want to see that sort of thing, the Meeple Monkey has done it fantastically on his channel. He makes sure that you have time to pause and look at every single card and read it if that's what you want to see. But because I'm in Canada, most of the people who really would want to see that have probably already gotten their pledges. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say if you really want to see every card down to the most minute detail, check out Meeple Monkey. I am just doing this as more sort of a reaction to my own unboxing kind of thing, just providing some colorful commentary as I open shrink wrap and gaze in delight at all the wonders located therein. Uh, it's also going to be a long chunk of uh, video, so we're actually splitting this up into an epic trilogy. This is part one of three, so let's not waste any more time. Let's travel back in time, in fact, two days to when I first got the delivery, and let's open these suckers up together. Here we go. Here they are. Okay, let's go ahead and start opening. Oh boy, breaking the seal. I feel like Indiana Jones. Um, I don't know how interesting it's gonna be to see a man just opening a box. So maybe I'll even end up cutting this or editing it. I don't know. But just wanna make sure everything inside is nice and kosher. Oh boy, I see the big box. I see the gigantic big box. Ah, look at all those goodies. Okay. <laughs> there's Iron Lad. He's probably going to be the first thing I open. And there's all the little, little tiny, teeny things. But uh, let's take a look at box number two and make sure this has everything that it should as well. Whoops. There we go. Okay. Ta-da! Ta-da! And bubble wrap! You know, really, the bubble wrap was what I wanted. I'm gonna throw out the games. Uh, hey, there they are! Oh my gosh! I And, yeah, it's it looks like everything is there. Wow. I am not married, but if I was, this would still be the greatest day of my life. Sorry, hypothetical wife. All right, let's take these to the table and start opening stuff. Okay, we're gonna start with just a couple small things because I like starting from my least exciting thing and working my way up. So, you know what, as a little bonus, just to get myself pumped up, I'm gonna open Iron Lad because Iron Lad is going to go in the big box anyway. And this is one of the only boxes, if not the only box that I will end up tossing out because these are disposable, these little black and white boxes. So let's just open Iron Lad up and get him out of the way. Okay. I'm excited. This is... I'm finally getting a version of Kang, a variant of Kang, because the MCU isn't going to give it to me anymore. All right. There he is. There's nothing left in there, right? Nope. Oh, wow. All right. There's his cards. Very nice. There's his equipment. And... There's his body. Um, is this taped up? It might be taped up. It's taped up. That's okay. We can untape it like so and retrieve Iron Lad. This is the first multiverse mini that I am touching with my hands. Ooh, hello. Wow. Outstanding. 
I can already tell like just how much more detailed these feel and they feel heftier too than the other two seasons worth of minis. So that is great. Let me put him there with his stuff. Um, I will, you know what? I'm not going to tear this open right now. Uh, we'll, we'll leave that there for now. Uh, let's get pet companions going again, because this is the box I am the least excited for. So we will open it first. Uh, boo -boo -boo -boo. Pet companions. Fun fact, I have never had a pet in my life. Uh, we never really had the money to own a pet. We still don't. Uh, it's still very costly to take care of an animal. So that's why we've never owned a pet. But if I had to have a pet, I would want something super low maintenance. So I don't know, maybe a, a ant farm? <laughs> no, not even that. I don't know. I don't even know what a low maintenance animal would be like. But, ooh, there we go. We got cards here with Mr. Throg. And there's his cards there. And some lovely miniatures. Sorry, I think I just jostled my tripod. I hope I didn't ruin the, the picture. Um, okay, miniatures. There we go. So this tray I want to keep. So I want to be careful that I don't destroy the tray. Do not destroy the tray, Andrew. There we go. Tray successfully not destroyed. And there are our mini. Wow, they're so much smaller than I thought they were going to be. Like, I knew they'd be small, but yeah, sorry, I've been holding this kind of off center this whole time. I'm just, I'm too excited to even be looking in the camera. Um, all right, there's Red Wing. Red Wing is the one that I forget. I always try to remember who's in every box, and I forget that this box has Red Wing. Jeffrey, Alligator Loki. Very nice. Yeah, these are way smaller than I thought they were going to be. I don't know why I thought they'd be bigger, but I definitely didn't think they'd be this tiny. But that's cool. That means they just take up less space. There's Frog Thor, my favorite one in the box. He's got a little... I don't know if that's the same Mjolnir. It can't be. It's too small to be the same Mjolnir. It's a different one. It's Fjolnir, I guess. I don't know. All right, just for funsies, let's open this while we're here. Can I do this without slicing my finger open? Because A, I don't need to go to the ER right now. And B, I don't want to get blood all over my multiverse stuff. That would be a lose-lose scenario. Okay. This is obviously everybody's favorite part, is watching a grown man struggle with cellophane. Right? There we go. We got it. Oh, that victorious feeling of getting cellophane off of a pack of cards. All right. Alligator Loki, he's got his own card there that says stuff about him. Okay, so they've all got that. They've all got little little rules card. Very nice. Let's see. Um, what's that thing everybody said where Cosmo had uh, Jeffrey behind him? Yep, yeah, yeah, I got that too. Okay. So I don't know if that was a misprint or what was going on, but it's here and I'm fine with it. That's okay. I uh, I will try pets once. I can't promise I'll try it twice, but I'm happy to have pets. You know what? Just for giggles, let's continue with these decks. Because, um, again, I'm much more excited for the boxes than I am for the decks, even though these have me really, really excited. So let's start with the campaign decks here. Yep because I'm so curious to see what these are going to be like. Um, I see some carnage on the front. That's gonna make me and my buddy Tiago very happy. Um, my best friend Tiago's favorite Marvel character is uh, Spider-Man and his favorite Spider-Man villain is Carnage. And we grew up playing the Maximum Carnage uh, Sega Genesis game together and it took us a long time to beat it. So Carnage is kind of like our little go-to uh, villain, and he's very excited to try Maximum Carnage when he comes over. So this has all the uh, all the required boxes. Okay, nice little pamphlet. Cool, and this is a solid box too. I like that. And these are nice and big. I remember when I saw Meeple Monkeys unboxing, I was stunned by how big they were. I was not expecting that. I don't think 
the Kickstarter mentioned that these cards were oversized. Or maybe it did, and I was just too dumb and blinded by excitement to notice or, you know, read that. Ta-da! I am still very confused by the fact that apparently the character Executioner is not part of Executioner's song. Move these. Um, that's what I've heard anyway. I find that just startlingly strange. Oh, I don't want to spoil things, so maybe I should open it like this. So there's Executioner's song. All right. So hopefully I'm not missing anything. And like I said, I'm not going to go card by card uh, just because this is more of me reacting than it is me showing every detail. Uh, Meeple Monkey's done that so well. There's no point trying to do it any better because it can't be done better. He did it spectacularly. So I'm just going to show off like this. And I really don't want to spoil these for anybody who doesn't want them spoiled. So I got to look at those with more depth later on. But there they are. And they are, that is a heavy brick of cards. My goodness. All right, team deck time. Let's see what we got here with the team decks. All right, I got the cellophane off. Let's take a look. I'm more excited for those ones, so let's open this one first. Uh, the boxes are just... The quality of the actual boxes feels really nice. And it's not like they were bad before. It's just they feel even better now. Okay, I'm so glad this has uh, the rules um, just there, just in case. But I'm also even more glad that these have the... The special, yeah, this, the card that tells you who goes on the team. Uh, because that would have sucked if you would have had to just remember everything. Um, it would have been nice, though, if they included some blanks to say, Season 4 is coming. Um, but I I would assume that if, not if, when Season 4 does get made, uh, they will just come out with a replacement card with any updates. All right? And I'm sure they wouldn't need to do that for every team. Because uh, some of these teams they've already filled out. All right. Here are our team decks. We got Deadpools. We got Asgardians. We got Spider People. The Champions. The Wakandans. Wakanda Forever. Team Iron Man. Sorry, I'm holding them very far. Team Captain America. And the, the bland team that you can just make on your own. All right. Beautiful cards. Very, very nice. And I love, love, love this whole aspect where there's like a weakness the team has and it's going to be utilized in the team thing. Ooh, Elsa Bloodstone teamed up with Deadpool once upon a time. Oh, I can't wait for Witching Hour so I can add that to the roster. Oh boy, very exciting. Okay, let's put these down here for now. Uh, out of the glare so you guys can still have something pretty to look at in the background. And let's get this one open now. All right. Who do we have? The Guardians of the Galaxy. A-Force. Nice. Okay, see, this the A-Force roster definitely needs to be updated. Uh, because in Season 4, we got to get Rescue, man. Uh, all right, Defenders. Cool, cool, cool. Uncanny X-4. There's so many X-teams. Like, I cannot keep track of them all. X-Men, just good old vanilla X-Men. New Avengers, what happened to the old ones? And there they are. There's the old Avengers. They should change their name to old Avengers. And of course, the Avengers list is ginormous because everybody has been an Avenger at one point or another. God, those are beautiful. New Avengers, that's a big list too. There's a lot of you. Okay. Yeah, speaking of big lists, holy cow. Da -na 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 -na. Na -na 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 -na. I'm glad they went yellow and blue. What's their weakness? Mankind has always feared what it doesn't understand. Yeah, that's fair. Uncanny X-Force. I always found it funny how they used uncanny as one of the adjectives for X-Men. Because I always use the word uncanny when I'm talking about how something looks incredibly like something else, right? Like, that table bore an uncanny resemblance to the other table. So whenever I hear that, I think, are they saying the X-Men look exactly like somebody else? I don't know. I always thought that was a strange choice. 
Uncanny X-Men A-Force. Whoops, sorry, tripod. A oh, look how beautiful and colorful that is. The A-Force. What's their weakness? So many zombies. Oh, yeah, I guess they fight the Marvel zombies. And there's the Guardians of the Galaxy, who are purple because they should be purple. That first Guardians movie was a very purple movie. All right, and I've opened the second box now, the promo team decks, and I decided to spare you all the cellophane battles. So let's pop in here and see what we've got. We've got the West Coast Avengers, who are like the regular Avengers, except they talk like this, dude, and they love to go surfing. <laughs> right? That's how everybody in the West Coast talks, right? <laughs> um, and they have beautiful cards as well. The Savage Avengers. These guys are just posting dank memes every day. And uh, roasting people on Twitter. Resistance against Apocalypse. What color are these? They're brown. Uh, yeah, I, I gotta read this series, man, because every X fan swears by them. Especially, um, like, just the, the Marvel United community in general seems to love it. Dave, Diversion Architect, loves the Age of Apocalypse story. So I gotta see what the fuss is all about. X-Force. Mm-hmm. X-Factor. There you go, Maple Monkey. There's Havoc. Is he on the card? Yeah, he is. Okay. Beautiful. Project Wide Awake. Oh, I love that. Infinity Watch. Oh, that takes me back to trading card times. This was the reason why um, my, Ryan, my friend Ryan and I named our Marvel podcast Infinity Rewatch because of the Infinity Watch. Uh, if you haven't listened to Infinity Rewatch, we just talk about the MCU, and recently also the Fox X-Men movies. Defenders of Manhattan. Ooh, there's different people on the cards in this one. That's strange. I don't think the other teams have done that, have they? Complex personalities. I mean, sure, I guess that's a weakness. And over here, ooh, Force Works. I have a lot to say about them. Excalibur. I gotta read Excalibur too because it seems like just people in a lighthouse sword fighting and that sounds like a ton of fun. Ooh, and they're apparently jealous of each other. Nice. The new mutants who can team up with the new Avengers and just be new all the time. Inhumans, all right. Beautiful color card for Inhumans. Look at that, that's gorgeous. Okay, Fantastic Four. Yeah, of course. On an outer space adventure. Do, do, do. Anybody remember that song? Marvel Knights? Okay. I forgot about the Marvel Knights. I forgot they were a thing. Illuminati. Yeah, these guys send Hulk to outer space and it comes back and bites them in the butt. Alpha Flight. There we go. There's my Canadian homeboys. And we got the red and white too to represent. This definitely needs an updating next season. And so does Force Works. Because Force Works is missing a very crucial member. Um... I thought this could definitely be um, an expansion box in the future because we are missing Rescue and Century and the Julia Carpenter Spider-Woman. But those are the team decks and they're beautiful. But now I think it's time to move on to some boxes. Okay, the first box we're going to tackle is this handsome gent right here. Uh, oh, look, he's sleeping too. We don't want to wake him up. Um, there he is. There's Finn Fang Afoom. Uh, and I have heard uh, some people say, uh, today in fact, on the Facebook group, how they're having difficulty with his wings. Uh, and that was one thing that has been concerning me about him, is just, uh, if Arcadia Quest's dragons are anything to go by, the wings are a little bit persnickety. So, and you're welcome, I did just use the word persnickety. That's why you come here, the digital charcuterie. Alright, so let's get this open and cross our fingers. And I'm, you can't see my toes, but I'm crossing my toes. That A, nothing is broken, because that would suck. And B, the wings uh, are, you know, malleable enough and cooperative enough that we don't have any kind of issue. So here we go. Oh, so nice. Look at these boxes. Okay. Opening this up now. I like to kind of fold the seam so it's easier in the future when I have to get this guy out and let's take him out and see what we got oh yeah that's right the dashboard is in here um oh and the location so i might i might move that dashboard and location somewhere else i don't know yet just because it's kind of in there loose and i really 
The dashboards are my favorite part of Marvel United, my favorite uh, component. And I don't want them to get bent or have the corners get wrecked. It feels so much glossier than seasons one and two. There's definitely been an upgrade to the cardstock they're using. Ooh, I love this. Look at that. So cool. Let's see what this location is here. Ba-boom. Valley of the Sleeping Dragon. All right. And here is our little leaflet telling us everything that should be in here and his rules. Okay, so we've got here, is this taped? It sure is, Andrew. All right, we'll get that tape out of the way in no time flat. So let me get that there. Tape eliminated. All right, here are his cards. He's gonna be asleep until we wake him up. So when you're playing against Fin Fang Foom, it's literally like a variation on the 90s board game, Don't Wake Daddy. Mm-hmm. Threat cards. Beautiful, yeah, and he's a challenge. That's another thing I've been wanting to do, and eventually I will, is I wanna put all my challenge cards together in a deck so that if I ever feel like just a random challenge, I can do so. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay, yeah. Beautiful. Nothing seems missing. Okay, the moment of truth with Mr. Foom. I don't call him Finn because we're not really that well acquainted. Oh, he's attached back there. There's something attaching him to the back. So let me get his wings out. Okay. And if I go like this. Ah, there's the culprit. Boy, this reminds me of buying action figures in 2002. Bear with me, folks. All right, he is free. We have freed Mr. Foom from his cardboard prison, a plastic prison rather, just like Magneto. All right, so sorry, I'm going to finally learn how to center things in camera. You'd think I would know how to do this being a filmmaker. Uh, okay, his wing things are supposed to be a little hard to maneuver. So let's see, I popped one in. It fit in pretty nicely, actually. There's like even a little satisfying pop to let you know it's in properly. And let's get the other one. Is the other one going to cooperate? The other one feels a little bit uh, tighter. Let's see. I don't want to break him. Okay. I think that's as good as it gets. And it could be worse. Thankfully. Thankfully. Uh, these things are flexible, thankfully, so they won't snap off unless you're really rough with them. But man, does he ever look cool. Let's see, out of curiosity, I grabbed an Arcadia Quest Dragon. Uh, so let's kind of put them together and see. They're almost the same size. This one's actually green, so he even looks a bit more like Fin Fang Foom. But the spikes on Fin Fang Foom are actually pretty sharp. Like I'm holding it and it's poking my fingers. So man, they've got, uh, they, they really stepped up their game. Hey, how's it going? Hey, hey, not bad. How you doing? I was just asleep and then this jerk came and woke me up. Ah, uh, this is terrific. They can be friends now. All right, it is time for finally our expansion boxes. And of course, we're going to start with the least interesting one to me, but still has me really damn excited, especially since thanks to Meepo Monkey's gameplay video, I have seen how fun it can be to actually fight the Skrulls, who initially I was very sour on because I'm not a Skrull guy. And I'm still not a Skrull guy, but I am way more excited at the prospect of playing that mode than I was before. There's the back of the box. Who can you trust? I don't know. That's a good question. She's open. And yeah, there's absolutely a glossier finish on these boxes than there ever has been. Um, I'm very pleased with that because that's going to look beautiful, especially the DC boxes, I think, will benefit very nicely if they have the same glossy finish because those ones have a different look and it suits it more. So let's see, as I struggle to open a single box, there we go. Oh, oh boy. All right, welcome to S.H.I.E.L.D. There it is, there's our little rules leaflet. And this is a simple box, so it's only one page. There we have it. 
Yes. I love that the locations have this instead of plastic because the cellophane can bend the corners. This is much easier. Look at that. And the locations are ready. The Peak 7, Camp Hammond with a guy with his shirt off. San Francisco, Mount Rushmore. I'm surprised those aren't more chibi looking, but that's okay. Beautiful. What does Mount Rushmore do? If all non KO'd heroes are in this location, you may gain one star token. Ah. I'm surprised we can't see Cary Grant climbing up there, getting in a fight. All right. Here are the villain dashboards, and they look awesome. I can't wait to put every dashboard together and just flip through them like trading cards. And yeah, they are definitely glossier and smoother than all of seasons one and two. Ah, so cool. And as Anakin Skywalker would say, this is where the fun begins, because I am so looking forward to sitting and sleeving everything. Uh, last time, when X-Men and Season 1 showed up, because I got them together as a bundle, uh, what I did was, there's this radio show that my best friend and I used to listen to when we were in high school. Uh, it's called Coast to Coast AM. And if, you've, if you live in the United States, you may have heard of it. It was a very, it's, I say was, it might still be on, but it was a late night, very late night, like from 11 p.m. till dawn, uh, radio call-in show where they talked about the paranormal and UFOs and ghosts and the occult and conspiracy theories. Uh, so when the last season came, I put some earbuds in, I listened to an old archived episode of Coast to Coast, and I just sleeved away until the late, late night, and man, was that ever just a beautiful moment, and I can't wait to recreate that with Multiverse. Here's our shield people. I mean, I was most excited about Maria Hill in this box, because she was, you know, a big deal in the movies, so it's really nice to get her. I'm also pretty excited about Nick Fury Sr., even though I prefer the Nick Fury, who's Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, this guy was in a lot of the cartoons I grew up with, so having him in the game. Whoa, there goes Ronan's card. Uh, having him in the game is a nice little treat. And there's everybody's cards right there. Um, wow. Beautiful. Oh boy, sleeving, this is going to be so much fun. Oh, and there are our teeny tiny cards with some equipment. I think it's just Ronan who has the equipment here. It's just his blade. But regardless, we will get it off eventually. There, I finally did it. And there's Ronan's card. And then the rest is all those uh, advanced training cards, which um, Meeple Monkey played with these, but I uh, I didn't quite grasp how they work too well. So I, I need to look at the uh, instructions and really fully understand that better. But let's take a look at these. We'll start with the scrolls. Because again, they, they excite me the least. So, we got different poses of scrolls right here, right? Come on, focus. There you go, baby. We got um, Posey Scroll here, who is out of focus. We've got turning and shooting from the hip scroll. I'll call him hip shoot scroll. We've got standing scroll and we've got come get some scroll I like their pointy ears and here's the queen of all scroll them she looks all right she's got a cape very cool All right, Ronan's got a pretty, pretty rad uh, miniature, I must say. He's on uh, a Japanese-looking rooftop, just like Silver Samurai. So they're going to have some nice battles, if I have anything to say about it. Ooh, very, very sweet. This is... is this Maria or Quake? Let's see. Let's put them both together. I think it's Maria. 
Yeah, because Quake has the big gauntlets. So she's holding out her hand like, Maria, are you okay? And Maria's like, I'm so mad because people keep thinking I'm you and you're me. Uh, yeah, and Quake also has an earthquake happening at her feet. That's a nice telltale sign. So that'll help me not mix them up if they ever end up playing together. And then last but not least, Nicholas Johannesburg Fury III. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, it's time to annihilate stuff. This is going to be our next box. Annihilation. And I'm very excited about this box because it's all new characters, like brand spanking new. Nobody in it is a repeat or anything. Um, the only reason why this is next, why it's not ranked as high as most of the others, is just because it's lighter on stuff, lighter on goodies. Uh, it's much more like a Season 1 expansion. The Season 1 expansions were pretty small, and this one is like that, but that's okay, because it's giving us some characters that were sorely missed. Man, these glossy new boxes are nice. Oh, boy. Let's take a look at the back really quickly. There we go. Beautiful. I am so grateful that I have, in my very small apartment, space to keep the boxes because it would crush me if I had to get rid of any of these boxes. There is our rules leaflet. Oh, there's some tokens in here. Great. There they are. There are those tokens. Even this, this plastic thing is thicker and sturdier and of, of higher quality than Seasons 1 and 2. Man, they have stepped up their game. I don't know if Simon is using a different, uh, you know, company or what, or if they've just put more money into this, but hot damn. Extreme Makeover Board Game Edition. And this is a board game that was already, in my opinion, the most beautiful looking board game ever, but now it's like even more so. All right, Arthros, Nova Core Headquarters, Harvester of Sorrow. And that's terrifying because it looks like just a giant beehive, and I'm not a bee fan, Creelor. So if I saw that floating above my home city, I would go into a basement and never come out again until it was dealt with. Um, I would be very unsuperheroic if that ever occurred. Ooh, I love when there's a tracker. Very nice. Okay. Let's get these cards open. If you listen to Infinity Rewatch, uh, the podcast, which you should because it's fun, uh, there is a running joke. Oops, sorry, tripod. There's a running joke that I have that drives my buddy Ryan crazy, so I continue doing it, where the joke is that Leslie Bibb, who played the reporter Christine Everhart in Iron Man's Part 1 and 2, uh, the running joke I have is that she is secretly... Annihilus, and when Annihilus does show up in the MCU, it's going to be Leslie Bibb playing him. Uh, so I try to make that joke once per episode as like a an oh my god, they killed Kenny, just running gag that we have. Um, so this is, Ryan, if you're watching, the first time you'll be able to play as Leslie Bibb in a board game. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? We got the challenge with the complications. That's right. The complication deck is in here. Very cool. Great colors. The art on Nova Prime. Man, when I was looking at his cards before uh, in a in the Meeple Monkey unboxing video, like they really, really went all out on his art. He looks like the most detailed character um, in the whole, all three seasons, really. Like there's just something about the way they draw him, like right here where it almost doesn't even look chibi. It almost doesn't look like a cartoon. Uh, but thankfully, it still looks great. Because that's what I love about this game, is how the cartoony flavor of it just really pops and looks magnificent. Yes, I'm so happy with her, because we don't have enough heroes who are green, or rather, who wear green. So it's nice to have green hero cards. Uh, Falavel. Her sword is spectacular. Okay, and then as we come here, we come to Annihilus. 
and there's his cards. I'll count everything later to make sure it's all legit, but I'm sure that's got all the stuff I need. Okay, who are we looking at first? We're going to look at Nova Prime first, because at the end of the day, it's just a, a Nova guy. So, oh, look at that. So nice. All right, very cool. Let's look at Moon Dragon next. The Sinead O'Connor of Marvel United. Awesome. That's great. Very nice capes. And as we continue the cape game, wow, Quasar looks really cool. Uh, what's on his base there? Oh, he's just like breaking some stone. This is... Marvel's cape game is not as up to par as DC's, but... Uh, this is this is some nice cape action. And there's Philavel with the sword of a thousand moons. I don't think that's what it's called. I don't know what it's called, but it's a beautiful sword. And finally, Annihilus with his spiky shoulder pauldrons and his hand. He's reaching for something. He kind of looks like Ultron. His his head. Um, this is my first real good look at Annihilus, because I've heard of him, but I've never really seen anything with him in it. Um, he doesn't look like Leslie Bibb, but that's okay. That's what, uh, that's what actors do. They play roles that are nothing like themselves. So, I'm looking forward to seeing Christine Everhart become Annihilus in the MCU. <laughs> if Robert Downey Jr. can be Doctor Doom, Christine Everhart can be Annihilus. Alright, the next thing I'm going to open is World War Hulk. Or as they called it in the chat the day it was announced, the Oops All Beef box. And what has me most excited is this fella right here. Um, very unique box. There's, you know, three heroes and three anti-heroes. That was unprecedented when this was first dropped. And I think it still is. There's really no other box like this. It's very unique in that regard. Okay, World War Hulk. This is all the Illuminati's fault. Here we go. I gotta get used to these new glossy boxes because I'm I've played so much of the old game that I'm used to the feel of the old boxes, and now this is gonna throw me off. Uh, but it's, that's not a complaint. That's just an excited statement. All right. Very cool. What do we got here? We got these. Whatever these are. And you know what? I've never used these. Uh, I always just kind of because I don't feel like fishing around for the BAM symbol, so I always kind of do something uh, else to signify that the villain can't BAM. Like I turn him on his side or something like that. But I should start using those more often because they're nice. Oh, these are so glossy too. All right, Sakar, which confuses me to no end because the planet is called Sakar, but his son is called Scar, and then one of the Reavers, who Sylvester Stallone plays, is named Stakar. So, man, Marvel, you really got to change the game when you're naming up your cosmic stuff. That's going to be really fun. New York City Arena. Battle World. For people who have that Ninja Turtles homebrew, that's perfect. All right. Very nice. These are definitely of different quality than the other locations. So if you were to put all the locations together in a stack, these would feel different. They would stand out. I never got the cardboard locations or cardboard villain dashboards, and I'm still not sure if I would want to. Half of me wants the idea of them because, you know, the, the idea of having just something of even better quality is nice in case anything happens to these, because that would suck. But at the same time, I'm like, is it worth the money? Because um, at the end of the day, that's going to be the deciding factor, right? Gorgeous. Look at all of these. Do they all have something special? They all have something. Oh, no, he does not. All right. And yeah, World Breaker Hulk is definitely going to be hard to fight. Oh, this is the one of the ones where it's sideways. So let's turn that sideways like so. Sometimes they do that. Okay. So who am I least excited for? Definitely this guy. Let's get him out of the way. Hulkbuster. Okay. <laughs> wow, he is chunky. He's a chunky boy. Look at that. Like I said in one of my very earlier videos, 
so many moons ago uh, in my head canon. I'm going to pretend that's Aunt May in the costume. <laughs> wow. Peter, eat your wheat cakes. Yeah, that's it. It's going to be the Aunt May figure. Uh, all right, who's next? Aries. Aries is going to be next because I just, I'm so puzzled that this guy exists. Aries is a Wonder Woman villain, and to me, that's kind of all he'll ever be, but this guy seems all right. I really like his figure. That axe and that just Spartan broom helmet. Pretty glorious stuff. Let's see what World Breaker Hulk is like. Yeah, check those out. Hulk angry. Mm-hmm. One of two purple Hulks we are getting in this set. And this is another comic book story that I would really like to read because I'm just very curious uh, how the story goes. I heard it's great. The Sentry, who I believe is going to be the villain in the Thunderbolts movie. So that's exciting. And he's pretty scary because he has split personality and his other personality is an evil thing called the Void. And that's bad news for the heroes. Hercules! Hmm. Okay, here's a, here's a very deep pop culture reference, and let's see who can guess it. I'm going to do a quote here. Beans? Hercules cares not for beans. If you know what that's from, uh, let me know in the comments. Um, I can't promise you a prize or anything, but I will be very impressed with you. Uh, okay, and the last one is Doc Samson. I can't believe I have Doc Samson in a board game. Oh, my goodness. Man, I really wish I was competent enough to paint and had enough money to buy paints because the idea of a fully painted Doc Samson looking like that. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking. Oh, man, I keep jostling the tripod. I'm so bad at this. It's my, my excitement, folks. It is overriding my sense of uh, muscle control. That's all there is to it. Lots more card goodness in here. These are the villains of the Void. The Void. Now, the Void has a special card, doesn't he? Oh, no, the, his hero deck has a special card. That's right. That's what I, I was trying to keep track of all the cards uh, after watching the Meeple Monkey unbox his because I wanted to know exactly how many sleeves I would need to get. I do not sleeve everything. I don't sleeve these. I don't sleeve the threat cards um, just because I wanted to draw the line somewhere but I do sleeve all the master playing cards and, of course, all the hero decks. But now we have so many new cards, like the the campaigns and, and the hero... Well, the campaigns I can't sleeve, but the, the team decks, uh, that now I'm sort of kind of sitting and struggling with myself, asking, okay, what am I going to sleeve and what am I not going to sleeve? So we'll see what happens. Depending on how often I use those team decks, which might not be very often... That might sway my decision on whether or not they get sleeved. Because sleeves are, you know, they're not expensive, but they add up. Uh, the ones I use are the clear, perfect fit dragon shield. Uh, just the light ones, not the heavy ones. These are the ones that you would use as an inner layer if you were double sleeving. Uh, and they are perfect. I love them. They are $5.99 Canadian for a pack of 100. So... I had to drop quite a bit to get enough for this set because uh, I counted and I needed at least 1,700 and change in sleeves, like 1,700 sleeves in order to sleeve everything that I would want to, plus any extras for anything else I would need. So, yeah, that adds up. That's 17 packs. Yeah, there's his crazy evil entity card. Ooh, the void. He's mean. He's a dirty fighter. All right, so, uh, yeah, the sleeves can add up, even though they're not expensive. So I had to draw the line, and I drew the line with the threat cards and other things. Yes, Hercules' cards are green. So cool. Um, maybe one day I'll sleeve everything, but for now, I'm happy with my setup. Uh, his cards are great, too. Hulkbuster, yeah, that looks really nice. But nothing top. This, this might be my favorite deck of hero cards so far. Ah, oh, perfect, perfect colors. All right, Dave, please don't hit me for saying this, buddy. But this is the one that I always forget about <laughs> over the...
past couple years, whenever I've been, you know, daydreaming wistfully about getting my pledge and all the boxes that are going to come in it, I always reach a point where I'm like, okay, I think I've named everything, but I feel like I'm missing something. There's, a, there's another expansion I'm forgetting about, and it's always the Age of Apocalypse. The only reason I can think of is because it's such an X-Men box that I keep forgetting it's not part of Season 2. I don't know, man, but I feel bad because I got nothing really against this box, even though it does have my least, one of my least favorite characters in there. Not my least. And when I say least favorite character, I don't mean he's my least favorite character. I mean, in the terms of Marvel United, getting the hero Magneto was not my favorite choice, but that's okay because it's still awesome. Everything is wonderful. Here we go. I forgot to show the back, but who cares? All right. The Age of Apocalypse. There we go. Now, again, I don't know the Age of Apocalypse, but I'm going to guess, based on how he looks, he's 47. Wow. Oversized villain dashboards are always a treat. Ooh, look at that DNA. Um, I, you know, I still have not, because of the random selection I use when I play, I still have never faced against Spiral as a villain. And she has that whole spell casting thing that looks like a ton of fun. I can't wait to face Spiral, but it's just her name hasn't come up yet. And them's the rules. I can't just cheat and pick her. All right, so we got a base. We got Seattle Slave Camp, we got Dark Beast Laboratory, and we got Avalon. Uh, there are magical creatures in my books called Avalons. Uh, they're basically like Pegasi. All right, there he is. Yeah, he looks like he's about 47. There we go. And there is Nemesis and Apocalypse. And now I finally have an Apocalypse because I never got the Horseman of Apocalypse box. Even though he doesn't look as apocalypse as I know Apocalypse to look, it almost looks like he stole some of Tony Stark's tech there. That looks very Iron Man-ish. What have you been up to, Apocalypse? All right, let's move the extremely high quality plastic thing out of the way and take a look at some villain things. Oh, and there's a Magneto um, equipment card under there. There's his helmet. It says to be used with the Age of Apocalypse version, but I wonder if you can use it with the other Magneto as well. I wonder if that would be compatible or if it would break the game. Who knows? Fatal. Oh, I love when there's henchmen. Oh, you know what I haven't done so far? <laughs> Random is so cool. I've, one thing I wanted to do for this unboxing, and I keep forgetting, is I love keeping track of how many characters I have never heard of that I was introduced to through Marvel United. Because there's a few. Like, I'm not a big expert, folks. I'm not, so there are characters in here, and Nemesis is one of them, who I had never heard of until this game came along. Same with Abyss. Never heard of him. Never heard of Sugar Man. I've heard of Havoc. That is one hell of a jacket. All right. Villain cards. Outstanding. Oh man, just the thought of sleeving these is making me so happy. It's the little things. And here are the hero cards, which are always so much nicer than the villain cards. Oh yeah, X-Man has a special ability on every card, and I think he's got like a buttload, right? He's got like 14 or something, or 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, yeah, I remember. He was one of the special ones. Uh, he's another one. Did not know he existed until this game. There is Morph, who made me really excited when I saw him, especially that we get an image of him as I know him from the cartoon when he laughed like this. <laughs> That was his, his thing. He was kind of annoying, but he was a nice enough guy. There's Mr. Magneto. Beautiful cards. Uh, the old Magneto hero cards were gray. This is definitely more my speed. Use the red and purple, right? And then these two. Very curious to learn what the deal is with Sabretooth and Wild Child. It's a strange pairing. All right. Let's take a look at some of these miniatures, starting with Mr. Least interesting, but still pretty cool. I mean, one of the best Marvel villains of all time. One of the best Marvel characters of all time. So 
you can't knock Magneto. And I mean, damn, he always looks cool no matter what they do with him. Helmet or no helmet. Strange hair or no strange hair. Okay. Sabretooth and Wild Child. Look at that chain. He's all like, grr, I'm wild. And he's like, I know, it's in your name. Nice. Very, he's like, he's hopping too. He looks really cool. That's an unprecedented figure, the way they did that. Uh, who's next? Dark Beast. Let's look at Dark Beast. Because I imagine he just looks like regular Beast, but slightly meaner. And yeah, that's exactly what he looks like. And he's red. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's take a look at Apocalypse. Because uh, he... <laughs> at least his head still looks like Apocalypse. Apocalypse with a cape, though. Yeah, that's going to take some getting used to, because I'm used to tubes, man. Sorry, tripod. I'm used to tubes. So, hmm. Oh, well. That's still... I'm very excited to finally have an Apocalypse, because that was one thing that was missing, because he's kind of a big deal. And Morph. <laughs> yeah, that's his laugh, all right. Great little running pose. They did a very good job with Morph, but not as good a job as they did with X-Man. Holy moly. Our first taste of translucent yellow, but not our last, because, man, that parallax figure in DC... Superheroes United is going to be lit, fam. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring back that slang. I apologize. If I think we just lost 20 subscribers because I said that. Ah, oh, so awesome, man. Whoops, sorry, focus. Incredible. That's, that's a beautiful miniature. And now this guy, who thankfully they changed his name to something a little less concerning... Um, I love that giant gun that he has for a hand. He looks like a Mega Man villain. Now this, let's see. Let's see what this is all about. Uh, does he have... Oh yeah, that just really just pops right off, huh? Very easily. And he's a big old skull. And this is yellow. You know, what's cool about this being yellow is that if it was clean and clear and white, over time and age, it would have yellowed anyway. So it's like they just cut out the middleman. And now it looks like I've had this toy since 1980 and it's just faded. But really, that's, that's how he rolls. Awesome. Great little box. 